Hi folks, and this is the very last video of 2023. I didn't think I was going to do another one yet, but on the 29th of December 2023, I decided to dig into the archives of the old Amash files and found John Dunn's very brief interview. And I thought it was interesting because John came to visit me at my home to go through some quite challenging experiences. So they won't seem that cohesive probably to you. It's not a long interview, as I said, be about half an hour or so, but it is just a challenge uh, about the different qualities of things that he went through and the different types of experiences he went through seemingly in quite a short period of time. There, he was a, a military man. I don't know much about his military background. This interview was taken from September 2015, so quite a long time ago, and I know I would have made some notes, and I can't put my hand on my notes just at the moment, so I'm winging it. <laughs> John Dunn came over. He didn't want to use his real name, and he also didn't want to uh, specify the location, so I can just tell you it's um, the south of England further south than Hastings, probably to the east. <laughs> and that's as far as I'll go. I'll just say again, I've said it before, it does take a lot of courage for people to come and speak to a stranger like myself and feel comfortable enough to reveal some of the really weird, kind of crazy off the wall, disjointed things, because this stuff so messes with your mind you don't often have a sense of the true chronology. You don't often have a sense of the exact thing that's happened, but flashes and vignettes of information and whatever it is that these others want to let you have by way of awareness. This isn't the usual and there isn't a sort of a total beginning, middle and end, but I thought it worthy of a view. So I hope you find this as interesting as I did and remember that if you have someone around you who confides in you or tells you some uh, experience that is of let's say of planet kind extraterrestrial or intraterrestrial or, or something other than than human then you know listen have a compassionate ear because you know, being ridiculed and not valued because they are having an experience which is out of your frame of reference uh, can be really harmful and have a lasting effect even throughout life. So just be aware of that, you know, just think how you would feel if it was you or you had something deeply personal that you wanted to share and, you know, that was ridiculed or devalued. Anyway, here is John Dunn from September 2015 and let me know what you think and if there's anyone else out there with some testimonials that they would like to share then do let me know and don't forget to like subscribe and share happy new year everybody we are the 6th of September 2015 this is the Amash Files Jalan with John done. Thanks for coming over John. Let's have a look at what your experiences are. So we're going to let just roll on. Where did you say you wanted to start John? Well if, if I go back just briefly to 10 years ago, uh, around 10-11 years ago I had my first heart attack and I had to go into hospital. I ended up in this particular hospital for eight weeks and I was told throughout that period that the military were paying for my operation. So I ended up in hospital eight weeks waiting for this operation and I was taken to a private hospital for it to be done, where I understood because I was ex-forces, they paid it. Didn't seem right to me, well, it made sense, but anyway, by the by. I've had things that I couldn't work out, but the main thing started about two years ago. Um, I had to go, it was my third, heart attack and it was the major one 
when there was an emergency and I was taken straight into um, the hospital and I had a new type of uh, stent fitted, which was in the shape of a Y, apparently, because it was a joint in the blood vessel that they had to do. I thought they were metal, but I understand they're plastic now. But two were put in on that occasion. The surgeon who done it, uh, I'll come back to this in a minute. After that, I had to go and have a treadmill test um, to make sure my heart was working. I had no problems for my license, my driving license. Yeah. Anyway, whilst that, there was a nurse, quite sure. Now I'm, I'm going to mention it as it ha as it, as it goes on because this girl was a very big busted girl, and I will make the point specifically because that comes in a minute. Anyway, I'm talking to this guy, and he said, "You're a really fit man." And I said, "Well, yeah, I'll do some training and stuff like that." He said, "Well, your heart's good," and he said, "And and then I'm looking at him, and I just said to him, "Well, I just want to thank you." I said, "You saved my life." He said, "Yes, we did." He said, "Another." hour or so and you would have been gone. At that moment from his left eye a spot come out and this thing expanded and expanded until I can the way I can explain it when you walk in if you see the film where you walk into the CIA main doors you've got the big star and I can't think what this star is called. It's got north, south, east and west with all these little smaller beams coming out and this massive particle light hit me in my eye in that shape. The nurse was taking off the, uh, the, the senses, sensors on my arm and as that hit me and I went back like that and next thing I felt my arm being pulled into her against her bust. I could feel that now a man knows with all respect a man yes. knows what a, a female's bust feels like. This wasn't right. It crushed down and you could feel the bra and the the, 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 the the metal bars in the bra, but it just went to nothing. Oh, really? It was really strange and, and it was as if I was being pulled back. I don't know whether I went like this to go in here. Yeah. Because I, and I believe that was the, f now I, well, I'll come to the rest of it in a minute. So I come away from there and it was a, it was a horrible night. It was foggy, dark. Which part of the world were you This was in? on the south coast in a private hotel, in right. a private hospital. And it was the same doctor that done the, the, done the stent, right? But anyway, from then on, I've started to get all different illnesses. Over that period of time, I've had sleeping sickness where I was knocked out for four days. Now, I, I can't sleep in the day. I just slept and slept and slept. High temperature and we just assumed it was flu, but I've never had flu like this. My eyes, my eyes, they tell me I've got blepharitis. They keep telling me I've got dry eye. They got this. My, since the, the main event happened, you know, last month, my eyes have started improving, but I'll come to that again in a minute. I've had terrible uh, psoriasis on my scalp which I've never suffered from before and it was like it, my whole scalp from here back was like a load of jelly that I could move around it was horrible yeah. it, and I mean well, they, a bit more than psoriasis absolutely and you can still see the marks now where you can still see well in fact I'll show you if you want you can see it's, it's improving now but if you look yeah yeah but that and it's like it's been like a jelly and I was taking this stuff out and it's been like a jelly in my hands. It's, it's... Oh, well, that is definitely not psoriasis. Well, I didn't think so. But anyway, I can only go every time I've been to a, a, a doctor or anybody, they fobbed me off. They got me out as, as if they've known something. Well, it's just been bullshit, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's even embarrassing the way they've spoken to me as if that's, oh, the doctors don't talk like this. But what, what, what are they coming from? Also, for the, for the 10 years, I've had a, a terrible digestive problem. I thought it was something like it would be stones. The nearest I've got to it with, and it's funny because everybody mentions is uh, chronic pancreatitis. That was the closest I got to the symptoms of it. But you, you read up on what people with this pancreatitis have got. Nobody listens to them. Not their doctors, not their friends, family, because because they can't find anything wrong with you. They've tested me for it. I've had scans, I've had everything, and they can't find anything wrong with here. It was poisoning me. Every time I stopped drinking, 
<clears throat> I haven't drunk now for four years. I'm vegetarian now. I don't eat meat anymore. That helped. But since this event, it started easing off. And this is the point you were making to me earlier on. Right, there'll be more to that in a minute. I, but I'll come. Then there was the craft outside the house. This was at 9.30 at night, March, April this year. This object was above, literally above the house. Um, if I your, your house yeah, or the neighbours? No, literally ab above the bedroom. we a flat roof house and it, it was as I looked out the window that that's where it was if I'd have taken a photo of that if I'd have had the, 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 the capacity to take a photo of that that would have been worldwide distance do you think it was up I think you said uh, before. above the house I'm, oh. I'm on the top of the house no roof 20 feet only 20 feet. it was that close right and then I'll come to what happened on the beach when I went fishing okay so just just to finish off with the craft yeah. what sort of shape size was the craft? It was a disc, it was concave underneath, in, in other words it went up in, 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 it had six round ports with a blood colour, I keep looking at that red up there and it's very much like that red, the darker red of it, the darker red, the dark red ports underneath, it had a gold rim on the leading edge around the base of the craft, perfectly how big were the ports, would you say? I mean, are, are we talking about the circumference of a few inches or are oh, no, they no, windows? No. I would have size? thought something like so that. So that looks about, you're showing me about sort of two feet, two, three feet. Yeah, two, probably three, two, I would have thought. Feet, two, yeah. three, yeah, maybe two, three feet, yeah. And, and they were sort of a blood red or blood deep red? red. Just deep, deep red. Deep red. Were, were they giving off light? No, and it, was, it was matte red. Right. I've, seen, I've only seen one when I've been looking, because you go looking for it, you go trying to see which one it is. And I found one that it looks like, but this this was, it, it looked like a little fighter, you know, like the Spitfire was to the world, okay. you know, smart, tight, you know, but this looked like a little fighter, but it had a one oval like that and another one on top. Now, the craft was slightly tilted away from me and there was a, a white, pulse of light coming from it but it wasn't reflective light because i could see the clouds moving across the top and it wasn't reflecting on the clouds above the craft i couldn't see where it was coming from so you couldn't see the genesis of that no and, and what sort of diameter overall would you say the disc was I guess? about 30 feet and it was and it was slightly tilted away from you so you saw the underside yeah. with the concave area and these six ports or windows whatever they no, were they're, 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 I think they were either the, gen, the, 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 the propulsion generation oh, system okay. in, a, in a circle underneath but I'm not but well, that's what I thought yeah. like the back end of a jet so, red, yes. but they're underneath and, and were you aware of any colouring was it absolutely pure metallic yeah smooth. the usual sort of aluminium -y yeah looking yeah thing. absolutely yeah. absolutely it, it was the thing it was the gold edge around the leading edge of the base, you know, yeah, about yes. a foot wide. But... And so just going back to, to the top, I've got it, an image where there was a dome. I bought some bits, but I didn't bring a bit, a bit of the craft. It, that's really the image I was okay. kind of having no. in my mind. Yeah. These were down a little bit. They sort of, they were actually... And this, this pulse of light was just coming from there. This was probably, this looked more smooth, aerodynamic, probably. So that's a guesstimate. Yeah. Of what the craft looked like with this gold leading edge. Right, yeah. All around about one foot. Um, and it was a smart bit of kit. It really was a smart <laughs> bit of kit, you know. It was, it was heading in a north easterly direction and it the, it the light expanded it wasn't a sparkly light and next thing this thing shot down in an arc came round the sea I was sort of looking in this position the sea was in front of me here and this thing rocketed down 
and it, the, the, all I saw was just this massive blob. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. White, there was no reflective light. There's nothing, I couldn't see any light on the ground. It was just like you'd mix some flour and water and slapped it on a glass and you could see, but all this is moving around. Move, and all, it's, it's just like this. And I've got a headlight on, a, a fisherman's headlight. And this thing's going around, and next minute I'm I'm frozen. I'm just my arms are down by my side. I'm absolutely I've got I've got a smile on my face. I'm thinking, but I've been proved now that there is something in this world we don't understand. And this the pressure that this thing created when it come down. I went <laughs> like that, and I could feel this pressure around me. And, and I'm, I'm looking down around, I'm looking at the water and I'm looking around, I even look around in the van, just to make sure that was still there. And I, I was totally aware of what was going on. I can see it now as if I'm looking at you, it's exactly the same. And next thing, this orb, I thought to myself, I can't see anything metallic. Well then, sort of, as I said that, that I could see, I, I put it down in the report as a, you know what you get from Paris of the Eiffel Tower, it was that shape. It was that shape, it looked like an aerial type thing oh. coming out from the top of the craft. But just next to it, this white orb come out. Mm -hmm. And okay. bits of this, whatever it was, plasma or whatever it was using, was dropping off it. Like you oh. lifted up something out of milk and just dropping off it. Next thing, this thing, this orb shot vertically up into the sky. And then it was going like that, like this. And then I realized it was copying my headlight, what it must have been seeing. And well, anyway, and I called now called it since the anglerfish. It was flapping something in front of me to distract me, I believe. It was giving me an entertainment while something else was going on around me. Because I looked down and there was a yellow haze all around me. Yellow, wow. this, this yellow haze. And it, it, it was sparkling. It was just all sparkling all around me. And... The the main craft, this one, the, 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 it's all, it blinked out and then I could still see the orb high in the sky and then this thing lit up again and the orb and that joined up and then went off to the, the south, the, the, the northeast. I come round and I'm, like, I'm, I'm down on my knees and, and I've got my hand on the thing and I, I thought, I said it aloud, what, what am I doing down here? And, and I'm looking at my body and I'm thinking, this, this, this is not me. This, this is not me. I just I couldn't work out. It was, you I was confused. You didn't recognise yourself. No. Anyway, when I stood up, I'm looking around me and the whole atmosphere around me was strange. It was because there's lights uh, over the water from where I am. And it, it was just an atmosphere I, I, from being absolutely over the moon thing seeing this thing i was yeah. terrified and i felt really really vulnerable you know so i i got rid of my stuff just threw it in the back of my vehicle yeah. and then went you know got out got out of the way the next morning the memory started the first memory i have is this big blue eye and it just this blue eye in my in front of my right eye and i mean it was massive and then later on through the day, it started to come around a bit that I can remember the memory is me going in down these tunnels and they were massive. I mean, this, this was an, either an underground facility or it must have been some huge thing that I was in. I mean, it just didn't make sense. The whole proportion of it was wrong to me, to my mm. eye. Did it sort of seem to dwarf you as a human being? Oh, massive. I mean, the depth of one tunnel that I, I ended up in a hub, what I believe was the centre of a hub, with, with one smaller tunnel going down that way, one to my left immediately, and one in the middle, and this thing was huge. I mean, it was the width of a motorway road. And, and it had side, and then went to arch. And the memory I've got is, is something, someone, somebody, I don't know, pulling what looked like a car. And that because I couldn't gauge distances or anything, but I could only see the size of this thing. But whatever this character was, he was either a midget or this thing was so big it dwarfed him. And you saw that how far in the distance do you think in hindsight? 
from me, possibly double the distance between here and that, that, that sideboard. And that, so really, that's not too far? No. Probably it could have been further, to be honest. I've, I've, I've drawn it. I think my, my other half's thrown them away. I thought I've got to redraw them. I really want to do them good so I can get a perspective in them. But before that, that I'm, I've, I've skipped one. The eye. All I can see, I have no feeling in any of my body. I can't feel my arms. I can't feel myself breathing. I feel nothing, only the images that I'm seeing from my right eye. This eye seemed to have been blacked out in some way or another. Are you, can you feel a sense of locomotion? You moving in any way? I, not at this point. Well, later, if I, if I get over this one, then I'll come to yeah, that. Okay. Oh, right. oh, right. I'm in a tunnel system. This is the first thing with the eye. I can see a figure walking towards me. Pear shaped head, but I can't see anything until the figure come closer to me. And then it looked as if there was some backlight covering it. And it was a, a, a pale translucent face, female, but with these massive eyes. And I don't believe it was real. I never believed it was real at the time. But anyway, this thing come closer and closer to me. And the, the left eye was heading towards my right eye. And if you imagine, there's the eye there. And the other eye was right over here. Can you see what I'm saying? This, this other eye was here. Yeah. So it didn't have, obviously the eyes were bigger and, yeah. and the width. And, but then the eye as I put it, went pupil to pupil, so to speak. This, the, the, the eye come on- To your right eye, yeah. To my right eye. And then it went black. And then I felt this terrific pain around the eye where they're pushing something into the ceiling. Something was being sealed around my eye. And then the pain, well, I don't know whether I was screaming in my head. I couldn't hear myself screaming, but I could, I was screaming. The pain was horrific absolutely horrific and then the, the volume in my head seemed to turn down and I, this female voice said it's okay and that's the only thing there was between us because I couldn't talk I wanted to ask questions but I was just observing because I wanted to see what this was all about and then light came but then I must have blacked out and then the next image I've got is this instrument moving away from my eye with particles coming out of my thing and joining up with this thing. And it was like a doorstop, you know, the doorstop. A wedge. Yeah, but tiered, mm -hmm. very narrow. And it was made of tight, well, it looked, it the look of tiny little blocks. And there was red bands around it. And the bands were the color of the little block. So it looked like one block was colored red and, and it went across. And this goes back then to the, the doctor with the eyes. Right. Something hit my face and I could, because then I thought that was the shape that I felt go in my head from the doctor before. It seemed to wedge into, I don't know if it was hitting the neurological system in the back of the eye. I don't know. But the other memories is being in the big three tunnels in the, in, in the hub. The one thing I can remember seeing is the big tunnel in the middle and I saw a flap of, there must have been a breeze or something because a corner of, of material seemed to lift over as if oh. by the wind and then flap back again. And since then I wondered, is it a TV studio? Is it a military thing that's been covered up that we, so that any people that were in the situation that I was in couldn't recognise yeah. what it was? Did you get a peek underneath? Of what? It was just it was it was pale, oh. very pale. That every the, every the covering of whatever whatever the, was around these the, the, the things was dark, really really dark grey. I couldn't hear any noises. I couldn't hear anything. Smell anything? No, no. I had no senses whatsoever, and that's what freaked me out more than anything because I couldn't do anything. And then, on all these tunnels, I also remember being moved along the tunnel, moved along the tunnel, and it was totally smooth, as if I was hovering along, you know what I mean? I couldn't yeah. feel any bumping or wheels or any any contact. So around. you weren't acknowledged then in any kind of vehicle? I was, I was being moved along somehow. Being mo moved along? Yeah. But you're not, not aware of being moved in no, a vehicle? Or no, no, no. I might come back to see 
this unraveling, this process of talking is also yeah. a great stimulator yeah. as well. Yeah, it is. It's doing me a lot of good. The next memory I have, it, in, I'm in a small space, circular, and there's there's another f of the pear-faced females over to my left, and, and I can see her looking at me like this, and she's looking like that, but she's got wispy hair, translucent face, very, very pretty face. Tall, short? I, I'm six foot. I was looking down on her, but not. she was taller yeah. than... So maybe 5'10"? Or possibly, possibly. Tall, tall female. Yeah, but she was a bit, a bit away from me. Right. There was a figure next to me, but I couldn't, I couldn't move my head to see. But I, I felt that I was on, I was standing. So I looked down, and I, I, there's this. I know him. We know him now as Greys, I suppose. But he looked, he, he didn't look like the Greys that we normally look at. He, he looked like a chubby little kid, but he wasn't grey. He was. He looked like as if he had a lamp inside him. It looked like a side lamp, you know, a yeah. table lamp. And all these particles were around him. And that's what made me think of the thing around me. And it, things were attaching. These particles were attaching itself to his body. But he, he was green, a very, very light lime green in effect with, with yellow in them. But I, I didn't see, it, see him after that. But he seemed to be, he was the one that was marshalling me around. He looked like a grey in any feature. Yeah, ever. but he, he had the grey features, the, the long face, black eyes going up, you know, uh, almond eyes, tiny nose, slit of a mouth. Was the body type the same? Well, I was looking down on him and I could only see his shoulders and stuff oh, okay. like that. And he, yeah. he was sort of, oh, you couldn't see his eyes move or anything like that. But it looked as if he was looking at me. That's the sense I got. And I mean, the dull thing was, I didn't, I didn't say or even think, well, who are you then? You know, I didn't. And was it very, very small? Do you, would you imagine? Like three and a half foot or something? Yeah. Like. With particles, did you say? Yeah, it looks as if he was being put back together. It was like, you know, when you see him on the... So I don't like going backward because it sounds as if you, you might have watched this stuff and you're putting it in your own brain. But when you watch a lot of this sci-fi stuff and they're teleported or transported, that's what it looked like. That's the nearest thing people can come up with, and That's also, right. how, where did that those guys get the knowledge? Well, from? They, they still say that what's his name who, who done Star Trek and all the rest of it. He, he's, he's visited. Well, I, do, I do know that he spent four months with a lady called Phyllis Schlemmer, who yeah. was in touch with a body called the Council of Nine, and an Englishman called Sir John Whitaker. Yeah. And they were having all kinds of communication stuff go on, and right. Gene Roddenberry wrote yeah. Star Trek after that. Yeah, the, the last memory I can think of now, I'll refer to my notes in a minute. Each after each episode, I seem to black out. It feels as if I'm being allowed to see certain things rather than being allowed to see the whole, you know. Next thing on. So this is after, after you've seen the pear-shaped lady, pretty lady, and the guy reassembling or whatever. Yeah, well, this come afterwards, but it, yeah. I, cause I don't know whether I was going back, but I felt as if I was in some sort of lift. That's what it felt like. I'm looking and I, I, I didn't know where I was. I could have been in a broom cupboard for all I know, but it was it was round. I felt no movement, whether it was going up and down to make it. And were you with those two beings? Yeah. The memory next was, I'm, I was in a, a, this dome was above me and it, it was this beautiful blue color with all these sparkling lights in it. But the weird thing is I'm looking at myself I'm, I'm looking at myself standing there and this it, it seemed to be structured this stone as if it had something to hold it all together you know what I mean going up and I could see the lights if you could knock this bit off I'm just going to mention the name okay. I'm literally opposite I thought first bloody hell I'm halfway over the solar. It yeah. felt that close, you know what I mean? The, the, the one particular yeah. light was a blazing yellow light in the centre. And, and and it was the atmosphere again. It was all this sparkle around you, all these little golden particles all moving around. And, and the it looked like you had a curtain with a picture on it and it was being it blown by the wind. It was it, it, it was all moving around me as if it was 
I don't know, I can't explain it, because I don't think I went up. I believe I went down, yeah. because going back to the eye and all the rest of it, one memory I've got is these two eyes and face coming towards me, and it's leaning down like that, leaning down like that, and it's coming towards my face, or my eye, because that's the only thing I can see from, and next thing, it's all blasting off. It's like somebody's put a high power or sandblasting. I couldn't see anything coming that way, but all this is being stripped off, and all I got to was a black shaped with appendages coming from the mouth area, and then blacked out. I'm in the place where I was, this bit, I don't know where I was because it was too close. But this face I saw first with the big, the big eyes was coming towards me and then whatever it was, well, was blasting back in particles, all these particles being blasted back. Off him? Off him. him. Okay. So all this is blowing back to reveal a ant-like oh. head with appendages because then the next one, see these, because I was in such a state, I, I haven't got, I don't know what chronological they were in. The next thing is, the instrument that I saw, told you about, that come out of my eye, is on a table next to me, in a lab. lab. I can see this, I now know, believe they're mantis. I thought, I was thinking afterwards, Hopi Indians, and so I was looking into all that. There are ant beings who've been seen as well. Yeah. As well as the, the mantis. This is what I've done afterwards. They're only quick sketches, but... And that is the end of the interview with John Dunn from the UK, the south east of England. And these are a few of his rough drawings. So thank you, John, and thank you, everybody who is brave enough to step forward and be part of the disclosure. <laughs>